morning students very warm welcome to geography class today we will be discussing about chapter 7 india geographical features in this chapter we will be talking about four different topics first topic will be location and extent of indian geographic geography next will be political divisions third will be states and union territories and the fourth will be physical division okay let us let us go through the chapter first of all india india or motherland is vast and diverse it is the cradle of one of the oldest civilization in the world over the years people of different races and faith have made india their home this is reflected in the diversity of language culture and religion that we see in this country today today with more than 1 billion people india is the second most populated country in the world India is in the continent of Asia the land that makes up India comprises the mainland and number of islands the mainland of India is a large peninsula bounded by sea on three sides lofty mountain in the both in the north separate it from the rest of Asia India is rich in natural resources and has diverse physical features now we will talk about the location of india india is the world's seventh largest country with an area of about 3.28 million square kilometers the tropic of cancer runs about midway through the country south to north from 8 degree 4 minute north to 37 degree 6 minute north the mainland of india stretches over 3200 kilometers it lies entirely in the tropical and subtropical regions of the northern hemisphere west to east India stretches for about 2900 km from 68 degree 7 minute east to 97 degree 25 minute east the westernmost point is in gujarat and the easternmost point is in arunachal pradesh peninsular india is roughly triangular in shape to the west of the indian peninsula lies the arabian sea and to the east the bay of bengal to the south of the indian ocean the mainland has a coastline of about 6100 kilometers and a large frontier of 15200 kilometers now we will talk about the neighbor neighboring countries of india we have many neighboring countries actually to the north of india are china nepal and bhutan and to the east bangladesh and myanmar to the west and the northwest are pakistan and afghanistan in the south separated from india by the pak strait lies the island country called Sri Lanka to the south of Lakshadweep lies Maldives also we have an island country called Maldives and Sri Lanka not far from Andaman and Nicobar lie our closest south east asian countries like thailand indonesia malaysia etc so these are the neighboring countries of uh, india the close neighboring countries are china nepal bhutan pakistan afghanistan myanmar bangladesh and sri lanka 
now we will be talking about the political division of india india is divided into many states and the union territories let us see what what are the how do we uh, divide india and according to what we call states and uh, union territories india is divided into states and union territories for administrative purpose the states have been created mainly on the basis of language India has 29 states and seven union territories. Now it got increased. No, yeah. Now we are having one more uh, what we call union territory, right? Jammu Kashmir and Ladakh has originated here, and Telangana also also originated, right? The names of the states and union territories and their capitals are given here. All the northern and northeastern states are handlocked. Rajasthan is the largest state and occupies a large number of the Thar Desert. Goa is the smallest state. Among the Union territories, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands in the Bay of Bengal are the largest, while the islands of Lakshadweep in the Arabian Sea are the smallest. New Delhi is the national capital. So these are the things that we need to consider in political division of india now we are going to see the states and capitals of india so these are the states these are the different states just go through the uh, what we call uh, the table here there are andhra pradesh assam arunachal pradesh bihar chatisgarh gujarat goa himachal pradesh haryana kerala karnataka jharkhand madhya pradesh meghalaya maharashtra Manipur, Odisha, Nagaland, Punjab, Rajasthan, Sikkim, Tamil Nadu, Telangana, Tribura, West Bengal, Uttar, Uttar Pradesh, Uttargand, Mizoram. And we are having Ladakh, I mean, Kashmir Ladakh also, I mean, newly come up state. Now we will be talking about different union territories. We will have union territories like uh, Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Delhi, Chandigarh, Andaman and Damana Diu, Dadra and Nagravelli, uh, Antamana Nicobar, Pondicherry, and the Lakshadweep. Now we will be talking, we need to talk about the physical divisions of uh, what we call uh, India. India is divided into five physical divisions. First one is Northern Mountains, second one is Northern Plains, third one is Peninsular Plateau, fourth one is Coastal Plains, and the fifth one is Islands. Now we will talk about northern mountains. Before now, yeah, now we will talk about northern mountains. High mountain region ranges run along the entire northern boundary of India. The northernmost range in the is the Karakonam, Karakonam, which lies between Indus Valley and Pamir North. The second highest peak in the world, K2 or Mount Godwin. Godwin Austin lies in these mountains. With a height of about 8,611 meters, it is the highest peak of India. The Karakonam range has extensive snow fields and some large glaciers, including the Siachen and the Boltoro glaciers. South of the Karakonam are the mighty Himalayas. The Himalayan ranges stretch over a length of about 2,500 kilometers from the Indus Valley in the west to the Brahmaputra in the east. The Himalayas are young fold mountains characterized by high peaks, steep slopes, deep gorges, and uh, numerous glaciers. The ranges are broken at places by passes. Among these passes are the Sojila, Sipkila, and Banihal Pass in the west and the Nathula and Jalipila in the east. The Himalayas consist of three main parallel ranges with large valleys like the Valley of Kashmir and Kuru Valley between them. From north to south, 
the ranges are the greater himalayas lesser himalayas and outer himalayas the mountains generally decrease in height from west to the east they are mainly peaks exceeding 8000 meter in the himalayas and these are permanently snow covered therefore the name himalayas himalaya mean the abode of snow the abode of snow now we will do one thing we will categorize the himalaya we we will explain about these four categorization greater himalayas lesser himalayas outer himalayas and purvanshi first one the greater himalayas the greater himalayas also known as inner himalayas or himadri form the northernmost range of the himalayas this range has some of the highest peak in the world including mount everest on the nepal china border kanchenjunga on the nepal india border and naga parbat naga parbat and nandadevi nanda devi and kamath in india many rivers originate from the glaciers in the greater himalayas the most important among these glaciers are the ganga and the yamuna which originated from gangotri and yamunotri glaciers respectively second thing is lesser himalayas the lesser himalayas are also known as middle himalayas or himachal lie down in the great himalayas they are lower than the great himalayas many beautiful hill stations nestle in the lesser himalayas shimla masuri ranikhat nainital and darjeeling are among them third one is outer himalayas this range also called the shivalik lies to the south of himachal this is the lowest of the himalayan ranges many broad valleys separate the shivalik from himachal these valleys are called dunes daradun in uttarakhand is the best known among the underlines that daradun in uttarakhand the fourth one is purvashal the eastward continuations of the himachals beyond the brahmaputra valley are collectively known as purvashal or eastern hills they include the patkai naga garo kasi jaindia and mizo hills so these are situated in the north eastern part of india okay. so this is all about what we call northern mountains now we will talk about northern plains northern plains are a large stretch of level and fertile land these plains have been formed by the alluvial deposit of the rivers indus ganga and brahmaputra and their tributaries the northern plains are among the largest plains in the world these plains comprise three distinct parts from west to east these are the punjab haryana plain the ganga plain and the brahmaputra plain first we will talk about punjab haryana plain then after that we will talk about ganga plain and then brahmaputra plain we will talk about haryana punjab plain the plain is a part of indus basin most of which lies in pakistan in india the plain of punjab and haryana is drained mainly by the rivers satluj ravi and bees which are tributaries of indus to the west of this plain lies the great indian desert or thar desert which extends into pakistan the thar is a sandy plain with numerous sand dunes it is a region of inland drainage and has several salt water lakes like dunds the sambar and the dudwana lakes are examples the luni the main river of this region has seasonal flow and does not reach the sea it drains into a marsh called the ran of kutch part of the thar are now irrigated by the indira gandhi canal 
which brings water from river satluj and bees now we will talk about the next point ganga plain the most extensive part of the northern plain is formed by the ganga and its tributaries the ganga and its chief tributary the yamuna originate in the himalayas some of the other himalayan tributaries of the ganga are the gandhara gangtak gandak and kosi the sun also a tributary of the ganga originate in the peninsular plateau the chambal and betwa which are tributaries of yamuna also originate in the peninsular plateau together this rivers make the ganga plain one of the most fertile in the world now we will talk about the third plain the brahmaputra plain the brahmaputra plain is the easternmost part of the northern plains it has been formed by the brahmaputra and its tributaries including the tista sang sankosh manas and subansh the brahmaputra originates in tibet where it is called the tang sangpo in india it flows mainly through assam in their lower reaches the brahmaputra and the ganga joins the bangladesh and flow into the bay of bengal their delta which extends into india is the largest in the world so brahmaputra delta is the largest delta in the world now we will talk about uh, what we call the next geographical area i mean peninsula to the south of the northern plains lies the peninsula plateau triangular in shape it is the oldest landform in india the peninsula plateau has two distinct part the malwa plateau and deccan plateau the two parts are separated by the vindhya and the satpura ranges we will talk about malwa plateau and the deccan plateau now malwa plateau the northern part of the peninsular plateau bounded by the aravalli range in the west and the vindhya and the satpura ranges in the south is called the malwa plateau in the north the plateau gradually merges with the northern plains and in the east it continues beyond the vindhya as the chota nagpur plateau to the west of the aravalli is the tal desert next is deccan plateau deccan plateau lies the south, south of the vindhya and the satpura ranges the river narmada runs through a narrow rift valley between these two ranges of block mountains and the river tapti runs through a valley south of the satpura these two rivers flow westward through rocky areas before entering the arabian sea the deccan plateau bounded by hills on the west and east western hills are collectively called the western ghats or the sayadri the hills which are part of the western ghats include the satmala nilagiri annamalai and kardamam hills anai anamudi is in the annamalai hills is the highest peak in south india the eastern hills are collectively called the eastern ghats they are much lower than western ghats these hills are discontinuous and they merge with the western ghat at the nilagiri hills the northern northwestern part of deccan plateau extending over maharashtra and the parts of gujarat karnataka and madhya pradesh is called the deccan trap region underline the word deccan trap region this region is covered by sheets of lava which produce which flowed out through cracks million of years ago there are many rivers in the deccan plateau those are arise in the western ghat and flow westward into the arabian sea are short and turbulent among the east flowing rivers of deccan plateau 
the longest is the godavari known as ganga of the south so which river is known as the ganga of south question may be asked the answer is godavari it makes a large delta before flowing into the bay of bengal the mahanadi krishna and kaveri are the major rivers which flow into the bay of bengal so this is all about what we call peninsula plateau uh, and in page number in, in the textbook page number 85 you can see a table which can which says about the difference between rivers of the northern plain and rivers of the southern plain next we will be talking about coastal plains coastal plains in india the coastal plains lie to the west and east of western and eastern ghats respectively the plain in the west is rather narrow except in gujarat south of gujarat the plain is called the kongan coast and further south it is known as the malabar coast so kongan coast is there and malabar coast is there the western coastline is indented and has some natural harbors including that of mumbai the malabar coast especially in kerala has many lagoons called backwaters the eastern coastal plain with many large fertile deltas is much broader than the western coastal plain the northern part of the plain is often referred to as the northern circus while the southern part is called coromandel coast the eastern coast too has several large lagoons including shilka and kulikat the eastern and western coastal plains meet at kanyakumari the southern tip of indian mainland so these are the things that we need to consider in the coastal plains the last point is islands there are two groups of islands which are part of india one of the one in, is the arabian one in the arabian sea and other in the bay of bengal many of these islands are uninhabited the lakshadweep in the arabian sea of the coast of india kerala are a group of small coral islands the andaman and nicobar islands in the bay of bengal lie to the southeast of the indian mainland they comprise about 570 islands these islands are actually the peak of submerged volcanic mountains they include barren island the only active volcano in india the andaman islands are separated from nicobar islands by a narrow stretch of sea called 10 degree channel underline the word 10 degree channel this channel is named after the 10 degree north latitude which passes over it the major physical units of india give it a unique geographical identity economically too the physical units are significant for the country the northern plains and the coastal plains are the most important areas of agriculture they provide the country with food and with the raw materials for many industries the peninsular plateau is rich in minerals and contributes significantly to the country's industrial development okay, so uh, when we talk about I, uh, islands in india we can see two different islands one is lakshadweep islands group of islands and andaman and nicobar group of islands uh, and uh, coral beads are there so they are called as coral islands mm, then uh, islands uh, many islands doesn't have human beings they don't have the presence of human beings many of them have uh, what we call uh, human beings and uh, port blair is considered as the capital of uh, what we call uh, andaman and nicobar islands and uh, kavrathi is considered as the 
capital of Lakshadweep Islands. Both islands are union territories of India. So these are the things that I would like to inform you uh, in this chapter. Uh, if you have any doubt, you can ask me. Uh, you can comment uh, below or uh, if you have anything to discuss, you can discuss it with me. Uh, I think this was a very good class. Uh, we'll, uh, So this is all about the chapter India geographical features. When we categorize India into different geographical features, we can see many mountains, plateaus, peninsular uh, plateaus, plains, coastal regions, then islands. Uh, we have discussed everything in this uh, video. So till then, take care. Bye bye. Have a have a very good day. Thank you very much.